Western Oregon University's involvement in this really uh, began shortly after the uh, presidential election uh, with conversations on campus around uh, the statements we needed to make to uh, ensure that we were a safe and inclusive community. And so that led to a, a very spirited and, and good discussion by our faculty senate. Uh, and many of the students who are here today were also instrumental in that conversation uh, in helping our Senate uh, really endorse unanimously a resolution that we should establish, establish ourselves as a sanctuary campus. And we did that in November. Uh, and that was, again, following the, uh, uh, really the, the angst and concern uh, as a result of the uh, presidential election and also the, the fear that many of our students uh, have about uh, their status going forward. Uh, it was really focused on our DACA students initially. Uh, as other events unfolded, uh, it became clear through really the students and our faculty uh, that we wanted to reach out to our city uh, that we reside in and talk about the role we need to have as a, a town-gown relationship. Uh, and so that led uh, to our, our students really taking the lead with the help of our faculty. Uh, and ultimately, I was also involved by writing a letter of support uh, to the council and the mayors about statements we needed to make to all of our residents. And so while some of our students may not um, uh, vote in elections, they are still residents for nine plus months a year. Uh, and we wanted to be sure that our students, whether they live on campus or off campus, uh, are, are safe and secure and have a, a knowledge that this is their place uh, so that they can complete their journeys. I think as many in the room know, uh, Western prides itself on serving students who in many cases are the first in their families to go to college. Uh, they are uh, really setting the standard for generations to come. Um, I was lucky enough that my father was a World War II vet and went to college on the GI Bill. It set in motion uh, opportunities for myself and my, my siblings, and I know that our graduates do the same thing today with over 50% of our students doing that. Uh, so I think Western has a special calling uh, to serve uh, underrepresented students and first-gen students. Uh, and we are one of the most diverse campuses in the state of Oregon. Uh, and that diversity is going to do nothing but continue to grow. Uh, and so the demographics of the state are clear. Our fastest growing populations are non-white. And we need to be prepared to educate them, uh, help them set their sails uh, for their journey. Uh, and I'm pleased that the city uh, and the university stand together on this issue. And so I've been wanting to see this happen for a long time, and it's unfortunate that sometimes the way things change is for society to get negative. For those of us who wanted to see that be positive, get into gear and get into action. Um, and so I want to bring you back to December of, of 2016 when um, Pat Nixon approached us and said, I'd like Monmouth to be a sanctuary city. And, and what happened is, because of the political climate, there were a couple of people who immediately said, if Obama is, I mean, if Trump is president, you know, sanctuary cities are gonna lose money. And there was already the stigma around what a sanctuary city was. And, and we were approached again, can you become a sanctuary city? And, and a couple of counselors really started to get defensive about, no, we don't want to be that. Some people had been approaching us, and I actually asked a couple of people, I said, why don't you come tell your story? Don't tell us what we need to become. Tell us why you think it's important that we change. And so some people started coming from Mecha, from Wu. Um, other community members stood up to tell their story about why this needed to change. And being up on the dais with the other counselors, um, I could feel the change in their attitudes as you guys told your stories. Mm -hmm. Stories matter when we want to make a change. I got involved in this resolution when Marshall Guthrie actually approached a few Mecha students to get, to kind of do some grassroots organizing to start um, a movement to, you know, pass this resolution. You know, it wasn't easy. It took a lot of organizing. It took over four months of constantly going to the city council like every week, um, organizing local businesses, organizing wineries, you know, agricultural businesses, and kind of just trying to gather support uh, around Polk County on this. What I noticed is that once that uh, people started to learn about this and it started to gain momentum, people just started to come to the meetings on their own, and the support for it was amazing. Um, I remember the final day, which was April 4th, when this was voted on. We had over 
I do believe it was a group of around 50 people who emailed the city council members and the mayor uh, asking them to support this, which I think is amazing. That and the room was full of people as well. As it um, progressed, you know, there was like, I guess this realization or just like, hey, there's other marginalized communities out there that we also need to reach out to. I mean, the Latinx population is one. Uh, the undocumented population is one. But there are also other populations out there uh, that we also need to keep in mind when uh, we start doing this type of work because, you know, being inclusive means, you know, including everybody. We just completed a planning process on campus. Uh, and a number of key pillars uh, come to mind as I hear the comments of the panelists today. Uh, we talk about the word community on our campus a lot. Uh, and we also talk about the fact that our students need to be engaged uh, in the community. So we have a, a, a goal of community engagement. Uh, this project on the history of, uh, of the, uh, the valley uh, is a good example where we can not only do the history and help uh, provide an educational basis for all of us, but do it in a way which is also available in, in both Spanish and English. Uh, I think of our bilingual education program uh, and the docent idea and perhaps having our students get involved in helping uh, be docents on a volunteer basis or do that as part of their educational experience. So I think one of the things that I have tried to uh, work with my faculty and staff on is being actively engaged so when our students graduate, which they'll do here in June 17th in June of every year, is that they have a, a portfolio of things they've accomplished in addition to the coursework. Uh, we every year host an uh, academic showcase, which was yesterday, where our students demonstrate the work that they do, everything from creative work to research, uh, it runs the full gamut. A project like this behind me would be a wonderful example of work our students could do in cooperation with the community. And I think here the community really means uh, both cities, uh, they're, they're, they, they abut one another, they're adjacent. Uh, I'll, I'll challenge any of us to tell me where the actual city boundaries are uh, by memory uh, because they are really in one sense a single community and we're seeing that more and more uh, each day. And so uh, I would say to you that we stand ready to work on projects and independence as well uh, as Monmouth. Uh, but if, I think in terms of the resolution that was started, it started in sort of in our, in our, in our home base, if you will. We did this because you know, we want to have Monmouth become a, become a more inclusive place. Um, you know, there's a lot of discrimination around the United States, and that's something that we think we can work on locally, um, especially since, you know, we're students. So this is just one step forward, though. Um, there's still a lot of work to be done, and just having a statement like this isn't going to stop discrimination, you know, stop racism and all that type of stuff. So. You know, that's, that's where we do our part as a community to um, work on bettering the lives of the citizens of Monmouth. I'm old enough, I'm tired of everything having to be lit by a fire. That it would be nice if we just did it on our own and, and could show that we really do care about each other because we care about each other. Not because we're afraid that we need to show that I care, you be, I care about you because mm. Trump's going to take something away from you. <coughs> You just need to know I care about you because I care about you. And, and I think that's where I really want to see the word uh, inclusion, inclusive, inclusivity kind of get to be, like I said, part of our everyday terminology that we're, that we're embracing each other.